I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, finally, Jimmy has made the move to Nicaragua, and he's going to be joining us today to give us kind of a what's going on one day into the move. This is an opportunity for us to have someone on the show and talk to you through the process of actually moving into the country in real time. And so that's kind of exciting. And he's been on the show previously, so you got to see his impression when he visited the country a few months ago. It's been not very long, really went back and immediately got things ready, got his dog all ready, and moved to Nicaragua with his dog, who we'll put on the show at some point, but he's napping right now. And uh, But this will be an interesting experience to see what's going on on day one, what he's been uh, finding, the things that are most important when he first arrived, and so forth. But we'll let him tell you a lot of that in his own words. He's going to be back with me right after the bus. I'm back with Jimmy, who was on the show. I want to say, was it July? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. perfect. Uh, we did a show out on the beach and talked about uh, his short stay in Nicaragua and the things that he had found. And he's been watching this show and others, such as Elton's channel with Immense Coffee, uh, mm -hmm. up in Acatal and finding information and decided that Nicaragua was likely where he wanted to go. Came down, did a survey and decided this really was where he wanted to make the move. And because he's mostly footloose and fancy free, but does have his 11-year-old dog Poe with him, that adds some complications and does tie you down a little bit like having a child. <laughs> yeah. So you arrived yesterday, mm -hmm. um, flew in on United, yeah. came from Texas, yep. uh, brought your dog on the plane, yep. and got here about noonish. Mm -hmm. So we're at, right now as we're recording, about 28 hours of you being on the ground. Yep. And once you got to Leon, we're right about 24 hours since you arrived in Leon. Yeah. So, okay. Let's just start with first day impressions. Like, what are all the things going through your mind? And, and you know, as you're seeing this, not as a surveying the country, but now as moving. Oh, you take a nap because it's a, it's a lot of mental. Uh, just traveling with a dog and then getting here and everything went smooth. Like, it was Don Juan Delanuch. It was very smooth. Uh, I don't know, the food, everything, the places are, there's a lot of places that have completely remodeled. Uh, Gecko. That's yeah. one of them. That was Since beautiful. you've been here, yeah. Yeah. Um, that sooner or later, I guess, well, you know, we hit the beach, do all other stuff too. For sure. Uh, but it's the weather, you know, it's rainy season. And it's real nice. It's still laid back. It's uh, tranquilo. It's, it's been a very smooth, easy transition. Very smooth. Good. Good. It's easy to be hectic, especially as you <laughs> first arrived. We had a little bit of, um, so he was going to be staying at a house so this is a, the back and forth on this he was going to be staying at a house that's like around the corner basically and uh, here in sutiava and uh the house um wasn't going to be ready until today and so uh and ready is is a very loose term it was an emergency house the original house you had a house you thought you had a line on mm -hmm. uh in guadalupe yeah, and that. that fell through or they just stopped responding yeah. Um, which is a common thing. So be aware of that, that yeah. you can be really close to renting a place. If you don't have the keys in hand, it's not uncommon for people to just go ghost you and like, that's it. Uh, I mean, it's not going to happen most of the time, but it's a risk. Like people just aren't that motivated to rent places here. So be aware that even if you're having a great conversation, you could have a thing just vanish on you. So uh, be prepared. Um, so there's an emergency house we were, we're helping him get into, yeah. but then it wasn't going to be ready till today. So he was just going to stay in an apartment that we have around the corner. We couldn't get the keys to work yesterday. Mm -hmm. So in a complete panic, we ended up and I had things come up um, yesterday that took my entire morning. Like I, you know, sometimes I deal with a lot of stuff here, a lot more than normal people. And I had some things that I needed to attend and places I needed to be and it was all good, but took every minute of my morning. And uh, so what I had kind of mentally set aside for being prepared for the day was gone. And then when we tried to get into the apartment to get that just, which is normally ready, we couldn't get in. And so in a panic, we're trying to get things moved over to the house and running around with people and trying to deal with transport. You were on the ground in a car on the way to Leon. There was just, we went from what was probably gonna be a pretty leisurely day, move into an apartment that's move in ready, it's already <laughs> furnished, like you don't need anything. It's people use it all the time. It's very comfortable. And uh, and we had the whole day to be like, oh, you're showing up just here. We'll walk you right in to 
oh my gosh, there's not a spare moment. I can't even get to the house before you're getting here and nothing's ready and we have to switch to a different place. And we could, couldn't get those keys working either. Eventually <laughs> did get in, but it was just terrible. And then you went out to dinner and later when you returned, I wasn't with him. Nobody, including the owner of the house, could get the keys to work. <laughs> they, had to, they had to break a window and use a stick and finally get the door open. Um, and this is, it's double secure. So the first lock had worked, but the second lock did not. Yeah. And, and your dog was inside. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but not again. panicking. He was like, no. Pose, <laughs> he's, he's a poe. Kung Fu Panda. Uh, but so, so a bit of, of hectic for us. So we're, we're kind of coming down from that, that it's been running around and, and trying to deal with stuff pretty frantically. And of course, yesterday was my live stream. So we're trying to get everything done and I'm trying to get on the live stream plus get the video done for the day. It was, that was pretty crazy and pretty hectic, but um, we pulled it off uh, and you were able to go out last night. You went to Gecko's like you yeah. said and hung mm -hmm. out. Um, so got to, to chill a little bit and then sleep. Yeah. Um, and then our adventure today, other than actually getting the house ready, mm -hmm. is we went out and got um, and this will be important for a lot of people, depending on what you have for, for phone service and such. So we have two things to talk about. Uh, the first is you got a SIM card today. Mm -hmm. So you're not on T-Mobile. No. Um, so you couldn't just use your phone when you came down. So you needed to replace it. But you have a, an older phone, but old, but new enough that you could just put in a SIM card, no problem. Yep. So uh, we went to the Tigo offices. Now we're here in Leon. Uh, the Tigo offices are on, um, I actually don't know what street that is. It might be second. Um, it's really close to Via Via and, and um, uh, Bigfoot Hostels, that area. It's just north of them around the corner. So we were able to park, walk right there, went in. That was really hassle-free. Yeah. However, this is an important thing. <laughs> I don't know how you get a SIM card there if you don't have residency. Mm. Um, you can somehow. Uh, make sure you bring a passport with you. And I think you would have been okay with a passport because yeah. you gave him a driver's license and he asked for a passport and you were like, oh no. But I gave him my cedula, which is kind of, you know, it's my national ID and he's fine. And because um, mine's not under my cedula, which is funny. And uh, <laughs> so then it was no problem at all. So if you know someone who has a cedula, you're all set. But I think if you go in with your passport, you will be okay because he asked for that. Yeah. Um, but so they just had to issue a, a card and they gave you 15 days of service, which is 200 cord. And then the total bill was 280 cord. Yeah. So this is activation I, and everything. Yeah. I think yeah. this was actually cheaper in raw numbers than when I did it years ago. I feel like that was 290 for the same thing. And um, because I remember it, it was $3. And with inflation, so it, it's actually a bit cheaper now. Nice. Like the cost of these things have not gone up, even though money has inflated. So phone service is getting cheaper very slowly here because they're not changing the rates. So 280 cord, which is way under $10. That's 370 cord. So this was round about seven something, like yeah. low $7. And you got a new SIM card, which you won't need to do again, no, and no. Which, which must have been 80 cord. And then 200 cord of service to give you 15 days. Um, so it gives you an idea of just how inexpensive it is. Uh, 15 days is about five and a half dollars uh, once you convert it. Yeah. Um, so around about $11 per month for service if you're doing Tigo uh, prepay on the, you go for the biggest plan that's the most cost effective um, with plan. That just means you choose the 200 cord plan when you re-up it every every 15 days. Um, so that was really smooth. They helped yeah. you put in the card. They helped activate the phone and everything. Um, and now you're good to go. You've got a Nicaragua number, and you can do all the Nicaragua things, and your WhatsApp moves over. And yep. So that's pretty cool. Um, I also, while I was there, some people have asked about this, and I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I've been super lazy about it. Um, but I had my Tigo SIM card because I'm on Tigo as well, transferred to an eSIM because I don't want to have to have a SIM card in my phone because if I'm traveling, I want to be able to just pop in another card wherever I go, which is a really you know good feature that you just always have that slot open, but I don't want to turn off my Nicaragua Tigo just in case, and I don't have to pop it in and out when I when I, you know, come back to the country or anything. So um, by moving it to a, a, an eSIM, I now have T-Mobile on eSIM and my Tigo on eSIM, and I can electronically go back and forth anytime I want. I can have them automatically fail over and I can still add many more. Uh, but this way, if I'm in uh, Argentina or I'm in uh, Guatemala and I'm going to be there for an extended period of time, I can get a local SIM card there that's prepay as well and just put that into my phone. Or if I'm lucky, get an eSIM 
and then have a number there that I can use in the same way. And it's just really flexible. So I like having eSIMs for everything you can. So you have the flexibility of a physical SIM should you ever need it. Um, but even better, if you go to those places, get an eSIM from wherever you're going to be. I'm very interested in both Guatemala and Costa Rica eSIMs because yeah. those are places that I, I typically really spend some time. Yeah. yeah, and that way, you, you know, when you're in Costa Rica, you can be like, I'm just going to be here for one week, turn it on and have fast service because my uh, I go to T-Mobile when I do that. And I go to it slower. So that is like the big challenge of day one. Tomorrow, we're talking about maybe going to look for the first of appliances mm -hmm. um, and maybe drive around a little bit. We'll see how much time I have. I have to I have to recharge a little bit from the last two days of running around, uh, mostly that I need some time with my kids. And, and tonight, um, surprise, I have to go to Via Via and record. Uh, so that's uh, even less time today that's going to be available by the time I get this uploaded, especially. Um, but uh, uh, so concert tonight, the eSIMs, appliances tomorrow, going around starting to look at houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, I feel like that's kind of that kind of been the it. scope of it. It doesn't sound like that much, Albert. <laughs> this poor man, he is a hustling <laughs> fool. Uh, it takes a village to help people that come in like I did. And uh, they are 100% and your full interest on being able to help out, ask questions. If they're not already answering all the questions that you never even thought about asking, you know, uh, you might slip in one or two just because they're answering everything and just talking with you. It's, it's been a very smooth transition. Very tranquilo. Yeah. <laughs> it's still just the first day. There's a lot of opportunity for things to go wrong yet. <laughs> I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't poke the proverbial destiny. Daniel Bear, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, jinx it. Oop. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah, house hunting is a big thing to come up yet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you're, you're still going to need some time to acclimate, and, like really realize you're here yeah. and have have made the transition to to Central America. Yeah. That's uh, a big boy, Poe, too. Well, yeah, yeah. He's in the AC right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little bit warm, I've noticed yeah, overall. But you're coming warm. from Texas; it's not that warm. It's just the humidity. The hu it's pretty thick. It's a really humid week. Yeah, like it's. I woke up. I think it was this morning, and I really felt like you know breathing was heavy. Yeah, it was but, a little thick. Yeah, I don't normally get that. Most mornings I'm pretty, and that was like, ooh, I I felt it. So this is an extremely humid day. Um, so okay, so feeling good about the move. Yeah, uh, went mostly smooth. Um, you're looking at a probably six month rental to start somewhere in this general ish area, somewhere yeah. in the Leon area. Um, need space for your dog. Uh, before we talk about anything else for everyone on there, get down in those comments. If you have questions for me or for Jimmy about, you know, what he experienced, what he found, I'm sure people are going to have questions because he just brought a dog in on United and a big dog in on United, but a single <laughs> dog, single passenger. That's so many people who have challenges are because they have multiple animals and a single person coming with them. That makes it a lot rougher. Uh, but he may have information about what was the, the current status, what currently went on, um, whatever questions you have, uh, because that's one of the problems we have here is that there's no official anything anywhere. And so we get a ton of our information from people like Jimmy who are just coming in and it's like, okay, here's what just happened to you and what things you went through. And, but, but it was super smooth for you. Yeah, it was very smooth. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, um, and they, they took, you had a slingshot with you. <laughs> yeah. I they know. didn't like that. No. Don't bring a slingshot. No. You can buy slingshots in country, but yeah. you can't bring them through customs. It was a rest rocket old school for me. It's hardware. <laughs> <laughs> That's some funny stuff. But you did have binoculars and no problem there. Yeah, which... they just inspected and made sure. I think it was uh, not video or something. I don't know. I, it's, but they it's that they don't have like explosives or something. I, is, is the I've, I've had a lot of things inspected recently, and they didn't care that they had video. Uh -huh. Like I went through a security checkpoint for something. This is for a private thing, like not a, not a normal thing that you run into. But they wanted to see the electronics and specifically things they want. This will probably none of you will ever have to do this. But I was in a situation where I was going into a facility that was secure. And when they wanted to do... Um, an inspection, it inclu included showing the batteries, turning the device on and off, and showing it able to take a picture. They wanted yeah. to know it was actually a video device and not something else masquerading as a video device. And I always have, um, you know, like tripods. Mm -hmm. They wanted to see those extend to see that they were real. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I guess, really easy to hide things looking like a camera or something. Um, or, I mean, it would be really easy to make something that looks like a tripod but is actually 
you know, a really tough stick. My things are plastic. If you hit someone with it, it's going to break, right? <laughs> but, and it's really obvious when you pull it out and look at it, but if you're just holding it, you don't know. So that makes sense, but that's, that's probably the kind of thing they're actually looking at is mm -hmm. to make sure it truly is optics and truly is a, like if it was a camera, they'd be like, cool, uh, that's a weird camera, mm -hmm. right? But those things are protected, like those are allowed in. And people do ask a lot, can I bring in cameras? Can I bring in binoculars? Absolutely, those are protected right. things. They may look at them, of course, they can inspect things. You're totally allowed to bring in cookies, but they have to inspect every cookie for the expiration date, mm -hmm. right? So that's the thing you just, who would know? There's not like a sign somewhere that says, did you bring cookies? Make sure they're not expired. What? What? Oh, but those are just little rules, but they know, right? No, they, let me tell you, the look on the girl's face when we brought in a suitcase full of cookies, because they're all wrapped in foil. So she looks up and looks down at the thing, because who knows what those are? And she goes, <laughs> galletas, which is cookies. And I'm like, yeah. and she's like, she started laughing. And then they're like, you're getting inspected. <laughs> they open it up and they pull every single cookie. And if they couldn't find the date, we had to find the date for them. No. They'd be like, where's the date on the cookie? It was so funny. They're pretty tough, but I mean, it's still pretty calm though. Oh yeah, they're, they're very, very chill. Calm. They're very yeah. nice. It's just they do a lot of inspection, yeah. but it you know keeps the country safe. So I mean, it's uh, appreciate it. Yeah, I've had very little at um, at customs. You know, I had my really tough story, which I did a video on three years ago. But since then, anytime I've come through, it's either been just wave us through, or when they do want to see stuff, they're just looking at it. They don't no hassle, no fines, no problems, no taxes, no nothing. Just they want to make sure of what you're bringing in, which honestly, I don't mind a little bit of delay. I don't like if it ends up being a whole bunch of taxes on things that don't seem like they should be taxed, but that really hasn't happened. Um, but I don't mind that delay for a whole bunch of security. And there's a lot of things that other countries have to worry about that we don't. So now that said, Argentina's airport, I have to say was spot on with security. They have all those things Americans are afraid of where you do the fingerprints and the facial scans and everything. You just walk through the airport. There's like no stops or anything. They don't have people checking no you. Kidding. Yeah, they're like, say your name, do your thing. And I'm talking computers are doing it, not people. Every step, you're just like, show your passport, do your thing, put your hand and right through. Mm. which I find weird. So many people are concerned about, I've had this mentioned a number of times about getting your fingerprints taken when you enter Nicaragua. So generally they have your fingerprints already. There's an international database for that. Um, and you're flying through a border. So borders are going to take, like I've had my fingerprints taken all over the world. Like it's very normal. Um, I don't know that Nicaragua does it very often. I've said that I never had it happen, and then it did happen. So I know it happens to me, but not all the time. It did happen to me. It did. Okay, that was I was just about to ask. And I know some people had said it, but other people have said they've come in without it. So it's not universal. It's hit or miss. Um, but it could be, it could be now it's universal, and maybe it's just changed recently. Um, I know now I do it, but they're matching it to my paperwork because I have a cedula. So when I come in, they want to make sure that it's really me and not someone who looks like me because. You know, there's a lot of people who look like me out there. So they're they're verifying that it's truly me and they know that it's, you know, but I'm already on file as, as people are. Um, and when you get your U.S. passport, they take your fingerprints anyway. So like you're already in the system. And what difference them having your fingerprints here is they have your face and eyes and everything already. Like those they have. Um, they've That's the more like fingerprints are really inconsequential. Facial scans are the thing that can track you anywhere you go, anytime. Because you can only track fingerprints when you touch something. But your face is like as you drive by, as you walk into a store, coming off a CCD TV scan. Like there's a million spots. Your fingerprints really don't matter. Um, because those things they have. So, and everybody has always, when you go through anywhere, right, it's look at the camera and they get your picture as you cross the border. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I liked in, in Argentina was they did this really heavy fingerprints and facial scan as you entered the airport, as you entered, not later in security. And then the whole process was just, yeah, it's still him. It's still him. And they would have automated gates, walk up to the gate, look at the camera, gates open, continue on. And you're like, this was so many checkpoints that took 15 seconds whereas in the u.s you have one checkpoint but it takes four minutes which okay it's four minutes everybody complains it's four minutes but but you have to take off your shoes you gotta and argentina was just so smooth so i was really impressed with that but overall i think nicaragua has a good process considering they don't have that kind of automation yeah yeah they did i was very surprised i was, <laughs> I was kind of worried with uh poe he hadn't gotten the restroom in a while about four hours of traveling two flights and all that stuff from dfw to houston to here and I made everything happen, no problem. But uh, I, was, I was worried about the immigration going to be <laughs> like it was the first time. So, you know, just be 
be weary that uh, immigration can take a little while or not very long at all. I was first, I was second in line, so I didn't take long at all this time. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah, yeah, I always end up at the back of the line because I'm not pushy and I'm not like, get out of my way. And a lot of people are. <laughs> it just wasn't that busy. I know it was like in a small area because the first time I came in was in a large room. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was in a very small, like, very small room, like hmm. maybe a whole 100 people. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Um, so yeah, so that's your first day. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, uh, any, any additional notes? I don't know what to ask, uh, it's, given it's, it still reminds me of, uh, the eighties, the whole tranquility thought process. And, you know, I don't have to, I, I took a nap and I slept so hard and I woke back up like two or three hours later that it took me about three seconds to realize I'm back in Central America. <laughs> oh, and since you, so we're back in Leon, yeah. uh, there are new signs. The new anti-littering campaign yes. is going on. So we got to see those signs yeah. as we went around town. So we're going to try to get some pictures of those for you. But that's a cool thing. Like I've been seeing those every time I go out, there's new signs around the city. They, it's got this lion that is like the emblem of clean Leon. It's like a cartoon lion and they have these green and white signs and they say things like keep keep leon green respect your city very rem reminiscent of early 1980s or late 1970s in the u.s and uh, we're just missing the crying indian to uh well you're too young probably to remember the crying indian like you're uh, just like right we're there, only a few years apart but i was i was at the willie nelson don't mess with texas when willie nelson had those commercials yeah it was, that on. was just a few years later yeah i remember those uh, but i didn't grow up in texas so we just heard about it. like we would see them as like look what texas is doing mm -hmm. um but nation wide they had the crying indian who's like respect our country you're destroying it and littering it and and uh, it was like this really sad thing and now it would be completely inappropriate they would never do that but <laughs> that was what they did at the time and it was effective we all remember it as like a thing um but awesome well welcome officially as an actual living in Nicaragua, yeah, not cool. a resident. That's a that's a discussion way down the road. Yeah, right. uh, no but uh, but you're here on the the visa program mm -hmm. and uh, the the tourist visa program. I meant to yeah. say, and the uh, you'll be looking at renewals in three months um, from here in Leon. So lots of things to talk about as as those things come up and and moving in with a dog here, which I did, but years ago. Boy. It's a, it's a lot. So guys, get down there. I think your questions for Jimmy and for me um, are are going to be the best things from this. But I, we're going to be checking in with Jimmy on a regular basis to talk about these experiences and what he's finding and what's surprising and um, cool, exciting stuff or whatever. Because, you know, bright eyed, bushy tailed, fresh look at stuff. There's a lot of things that I do every day um, that are like, oh, that's really boring. And he may be like, that's really exciting or things. I'm like, this is so exciting. And he'll be like, no, no, it's not. Um, but, <laughs> uh, you know, chance to check out new restaurants and do a lot of cool things and and just experiencing Nicaragua because I haven't experienced Nicaragua fresh in a decade right I came in 2015 nearly a decade and uh, it was so exciting back then but for me there was it was you know it was a long time ago and uh, I think that um, we can do some I think we can do some really cool content yeah I As, think uh, uh, I think um, since I, w I was in a rush last time because yeah, yeah. full days right so. I was kind of in a rush, but I already knew that I was going to come back within my first 10 hours of being here. <laughs> um, but uh, now it's I get to take my time, relax a whole lot more, and uh, just kind of just take it all in. It's going to be great. So today's <laughs> actually your fourth full day ever yeah. in Nicaragua. A few extra partial days, but only the fourth full day and you're not through it yet but it's uh, it's been an adventure yeah. so uh yeah so we're gonna be you, you have a lot of like seeing nicaragua like you just saw managua in the daytime for the first time yesterday as yeah. you drove through half of it yeah and uh, you haven't seen any of the other cities really not really so yeah there's a lot a little bit out there at the beach mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah but that's that's just minutes away. Yeah, so a so very small area, still part of Leon. Um, so there's there's Granada, Messiah, and Chinandega, and all kinds of things, and mm -hmm. like whole whole Nicaraguan experiences to have yet. So, all right, so we're looking forward to that. That's gonna be exciting. We did have, so I've been thinking about this. This was mentioned on the live stream a week ago. And someone, we, we looked at this amazing steakhouse uh, in, the, in central Nicaragua, and, and a number of people immediately jumped on and were like, I would love to do a steak carne crawl of Nicaragua. This was such a cool, they're like, this is a destination steakhouse. We all want to go. And I've been wanting to go there. I'm, a, I'm vegetarian. I want to go see this place, right? So we're going to start kicking around what it would take to put together like Nicaragua in seven steaks, a one week meat eaters tour of one of so nicaragua competes not very well but competes with argentina uruguay and brazil as one of the top uh beef destinations in the world all right right we're world-class beef 
it's not number one. Like, let's be realistic, it's but it's a really good steak country. Mm -hmm. We have some amazing steakhouses, but they're not clumped together. They're all over the country. And uh, so there's only a couple here in Leon. There's quite a few in Managua. There's a few in areas that no one goes to, Boaco, Huigalpa. And then I've heard of one in Esteli. Of course, some of the enclaves have them, but that's probably not what we want to do for it. But what I'm thinking is we could put together basically seven spread out, really amazing steak and stay, right? Steak experiences with a neat place to spend the night and and make a small tour for a small group of our really dedicated uh, viewers who are interested in hanging out together for a week and doing a not cheap, not budget, but an actual <laughs> cool, and I'm not saying crazy expensive, but you know, if you're doing a steak tour and like, we're, we're expecting like steak and like craft beers or wine and you know, staying in nice places in different parts of the country and like at the place we looked at, None of these places are super expensive, but it's not a $30 hotel room. It's probably a $100, $120 hotel room, right? To which two Americans and Canadians, they'll be like, that's just a normal hotel. Yes, but we're not talking about super budget. We're talking about like normal prices um, and do like a really high-end food tour that sees the whole country. We're talking about that. So I want to see comments about that down below. And let's maybe I'd be really interested in doing that. It will take some logistics. It definitely will take some cost, but I think it's doable. It would be really interesting. So jump down there, let us know. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at the link above. Buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. It's basically Patreon. Helps pay for the cameras and gears and trips and all these things that we do because it really does take a lot to do the show. So I really appreciate all of our supporters uh, that that make that happen. It's it's an amazing thing for you guys to, to jump in and support. And of course, we have our new membership. So the join button down below lets you join and do something similar, but on a monthly recurring basis where you commit to uh, $4.99 um, to and you get in the super secret chat room for that and help direct what we're doing on the channel and ask questions and, and get my attention much faster because it's very hard to get me. Uh, uh, because I'm busy all the time. And uh, yeah, just uh, hit that like, subscribe, and tell someone about the show. And I will see all of you tomorrow.